The more I looked into the Book of Mormon, the more I looked into Joseph Smith, the more I looked into Mormon history, the more disturbing it became. I began to study Joseph Smith. I wanted to really know about this fellow. And I realized that Joseph Smith was a con man. He was just a con man. Uh, the claims of the Book of Mormon, the story of the Book of Mormon, uh, it had its basis in another book. There was another man, 20 years before Joseph Smith, who wrote a book called View of the Hebrews, and his name was Ethan Smith, not related to Joseph Smith. And the church historian B.H. Roberts in the 1930s did a study between Ethan Smith's book, View of the Hebrews, and Joseph Smith's book, The Book of Mormon, and he found well over 70 correlations between the two books. Now, as an intelligent person, I can accept two or three coincidences. But when you have over 70 correlations, where's the coincidence? What you have is a forgery. You have something that's fake, phony. There were no Nephites, no Lamanites. Of course, the Mormon church is now repositioning their product, and the Book of Mormon's a product, like toothpaste, like shampoo. It's a product that's being sold to the public by the Mormon corporate church, and that's all that it is. I was startled to learn how Joseph Smith translated this so-called book from gold plates. My idea of translating something is you have the original text, you have a clean sheet of paper, you've got a pencil in your hand, and you study the document and you try to translate one language into English. That's not how Joseph Smith did it. According to the Mormon's own history book, he took a seer stone, a peep stone, something called the Urman Thummim, it's just a flat stone with two holes drilled in it, put it in his top hat, and then stuck his face in the top hat to translate the golden plates. Well, how big of a moron do you have to be to accept that as translating a manuscript. Nobody does that. It's nonsense. And to show you how much nonsense it is, I remember, I still remember the Mormon Church, they found the original papyri text from which the book of Abraham is said to have come. And the Mormon Church was so excited they had the original manuscript that Joseph Smith translated the book of Abraham from. From. And so they couldn't wait to have it translated. They knew it was the same manuscript because of the facsimiles. If you go to the uh, Pearl of Great Price, which is one of the Mormon scriptures, and you look in the book, they have these facsimiles in there that are on the papyrus. And that's how they I identified it. And they had Joseph Smith's handwriting along the margins where he was writing, scribbling. So they identified this is the original text. So they gave it to their scholars. It turned out to be a typical burial manuscript called the Book of Breathings. It had nothing to do with the Book of Abraham. And it was right there, <laughs> right then, that the leaders of the Mormon church knew Joseph Smith was a con man. He was the biggest con man of all times. And Hubie Brown, he was one of the apostles, made this really interesting statement in the meeting of the 12 apostles in the presidency of the church. He was very agitated and he says, it doesn't matter if Joseph Smith was a prophet or not. This church makes prophets every day and we have to protect that. And so they began the very slow repositioning of the church. 
no leader of the Mormon church, no one who is on the Quorum of Twelve, no one who is in the church presidency, actually believes that Joseph Smith was a prophet. They don't believe the Book of Mormon. They don't believe the Pearl of Great Price. And they don't believe in the doctrines and covenants. They don't believe in anything that Joseph Smith said. Yet they run his church, the church he created. And it's re really interesting. Uh, when they realized that this Egyptian manuscript, was not the book of Abraham. They began to reposition their product because if Joseph Smith lied about everything, then everything is a lie. But they still have this corporation they have to protect. I mean, the corporate church receives hundreds of millions of dollars every year in tax-free tithing. On top of that, all the church-owned businesses add a couple billion dollars in profits to this free tithe money that they get. So all of that has to be protected. And so they have begun repositioning the church, repositioning the product. Now they all want to be Christians, which is very unsettling to a lot of Christian churches, a lot of Christian denominations, because now they have this church that was Mormon trying to crawl into bed with them. You know, and the bed's only so big. How would you feel if a stranger with bad eating habits wanted to sleep in your bed with you? Well, that's where the church is. You know, they've repositioned everything. Now we're going to crawl into bed with all the other Christian churches because, you know, that's been around for 2,000 years. We're safer there. They think of the Christian faith as the Titanic.